वेलकम टू नेटवर्क एनालिसिस ईएलई ई थ्री वन वन टी दिस इज द फर्स्ट लेक्चर ऑफ दिस कोर्स टू अंडरस्टैंड नेटवर्क्स एंड टू एनालाइज देम वी नीड सर्टेन टूल्स दैट वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड एंड द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट ऑफ देम is the tool of mathematics which is the differential equations we have already seen in a basic electrical engineering course that we started in the first semester that network elements like inductance capacitance are governed by differential equations the governing equations are differential equations for example in case of the inductance we can write the voltage drop across the inductance and relate it to the current flowing through the inductance through the differential equation which is given by vt is equal to l dit by dt similarly for the capacitance we can relate the voltage across the capacitance and the current through the capacitance by the famous relationship which is given by it is equal to c dvt by dt so all these uh, all these uh, circuit elements they are when they are when they are put in when they are put in together in the form of a circuit the governing equation that you will get would be a differential equation like for example if you have a simple dc circuit in which you have a voltage source you have an inductance say and then you have a resistance and then there is a current that's flowing through the source through the circuit you can straight away write that uh, vt that mm, that the voltage applied is equal to l di by dt plus ri so this is nothing but a differential equation right and to be very precise it is an ordinary differential equation so we have to be familiar with the ways to solve ordinary differential equations in order to solve and in order to analyze circuits this is something that we have already done in the first semester but still a brief review of how to solve ordinary differential equations and their application in the in circuits that's the objective of the first lecture so let's start now uh, i'll basically write down first the equations for the uh, network elements and then we'll start by uh, talking about differential equations so what are the elements that are connect that are part of the network you have sources in a network and you have loads in a network right and the word network and circuit is used interchangeably although there is a small difference between them a uh, circuit is a network which has all elements in an enclosed paths right which has all elements in within a closed path right so and a network may have some open 
part also like for example this is a circuit because all the elements the three resistances are lying within a closed path you can draw a closed path and all three of them will fit in but if if for example a, a resistance exists here it is still a network but it no longer remains a circuit so this is a slight difference between the two so i was talking about uh, what are the various uh, elements in a network or a circuit so normally you'll have sources you'll have loads and in sources you'll have voltage sources you may have current sources this is what you have already seen before and then there are there are there are uh, differences further differences the sources may be ideal they may be non ideal they may be independent they may be dependent they may be constant in the sense that they may be DC or they may not be constant that they, they might be AC sources or variety sources so this is something that we have already learned and loads generally are of three types these are idealized loads you have a resistance you have an inductance you have a capacitance uh, these are the governing equations that you have studied are ideal for idealized loads in the sense that there is no resistance which does not have a capacitance or an inductance but we talk about them separately as if the resistance exists entirely alone the inductance exists entirely alone and the capacitance exists entirely alone which is not really possible in the practical world because inductance for example is made up of wire and every wire has some kind of resistance also so actually any inductor that you'll see will have some resistance of its own but we talk about ideal elements so you have a resistance you have an inductance you have a capacitance this is our sign convention we say that the current if the current is drawn like this and it flows from the plus end of the voltage to the minus end of the voltage then the governing equation for the resistance is vt is equal to rit in a similar way for the inductance if you are able if you draw the current like this which flows from the plus end of the inductance of the voltage to the minus end of the voltage then you see that uh, vt is equal to l dit by vt and similarly for the capacitance this is your current and the voltage the sign convention this is called the passive sign convention this is again the volt voltage across the capacitance and you say that the uh, the current to the capacitance is given by c d t by t so this form is the differential form of the equation differential form of the governing equation this may not necessarily be the only form you may be also you can also write the integral form of the governing equations this is an algebraic equation and it remains the same it does not change because there is no difference in form. so you can write the uh, integral form of the governing equation also like for example for the inductor for the inductor this equation that you have written here this one can be written as an integral equation you can write 
by taking dt on the left hand side dividing by l and then integrating you can write it is equal to 1 by l integral dt dt and this integration is actually from minus infinity to t what does it mean it means that the current at any time t in the inductor is the result of the integration of all the voltages that have been applied from minus infinity to t to the point t and then you also assume in this case that the current at minus infinity is zero so you start from a point minus infinity and you apply voltages different kinds of voltages on the inductor different waveforms maybe and then you integrate all of them up to point t you get current at time t so this is a kind of memory element in the sense that it stores all the information all the information and integrates it to give you the current all the information and the voltage applied so there's a kind of memory in it the current at any time t does not depend only on the voltage at time t it depends on all the voltages that have been applied in the past up to the time t compare it with this with the equation of the uh, resistance for example the resistance is going to be i t is equal to v t by r so for the resistance the current at time t is just the voltage applied at time t divided by the resistance at the resistance please remember in these cases we are taking the inductance to be constant it, it does not vary with time the resistance is constant does not vary with time that's why we are able to take it out of the integral so this is the integral form of the equation you can break it further if you want into you can integrate you can break the integral you can say that the current at time t is going to be 1 by l minus infinity to t say for example t1 vt dt you are breaking it at t1 plus t1 to t vt dt again this is your choice you are breaking the integral at some point t1 there's nothing wrong in it this can be done mathematically so if you look at the first part this part this part you see that by comparing this part and this equation that I've written earlier you see that this is actually the current at time t1 because you're integrating all the voltages from minus infinity to t1 and dividing by l so you can write it is it1 plus t1 to t dt dt 1 by l right so the current at time t is the current that was flowing at time t1 plus all the voltages integrated from t1 to t and then you have seen another form of this equation when t1 is equal to 0 so at that time when t1 is 0 we have written t1 is 0 for t1 is equal to 0 we have written it is equal to i0 plus 1 by l 0 to t dt d so this is another way of writing the same thing similarly we can write for the capacitor these equations in the integral form so 
for the capacitor the differential equation we have already seen the differential equation of the capacitor is it is equal to c dvt by dt you can write this in the integral form by again taking this dt on the left hand side dividing by c and then integrating on both the sides we'll get vt we'll get vt is equal to 1 by c minus infinity to t it dt again herein you are assuming that the voltage at minus infinity is equal to zero then you started applying currents to the capacitor and the, the voltage at any time t vt is the integration of all the currents that have been applied from minus infinity integrated up to t so again this is a kind of memory element in the sense that the curve voltage at any time t is dependent on everything that has occurred up to time t in terms of current right? so what we did with the inductor we can do with the capacitor we can break this integral we can write vt is equal to 1 by c then you can break this up from minus infinity to t1 i t dt plus then again from t1 to t i t dt again and then you can write vt if you see that this equation if you see this equation the first part of this equation and you see this equation and compare the two you see that you can write the first part of this equation as vt1 because this is integrating all the currents up to t1 wherein you have defined the voltage at as integrating all the currents up to time t vt is integral minus infinity to t so this is the voltage at t1 so you can write this as vt1 plus integral 1 by c t1 t i t dt and then you can always say that t1 is 0 and you'll write this equation which you have seen before t1 can be 0 so you can write vt is equal to v0 plus 1 by c is equal to t i t t so these are the different forms of the differential equation and the integral form of of the governing equations for the network elements inductor and the capacitor so these forms will be using again and again that will be very good at using them it's basically how the initial conditions are important in determining the voltages and currents at any particular time t so next we are going to see how differential equations are used and the knowledge of differential equations that we have is used to solve problems related to network analysis so what are the differential equations that we're going to talk about and which differential equations are going to be useful which methods are going to be useful in a study of networks that's what we are going to see next